Okay, welcome Ace family. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about the brass fittings rack and uh, do a good job at helping customers to find the right part that we need. Um, the brass fittings rack is probably one of the coolest planograms that we have because it does solve so many customers problems. Um, it is it's well organized and the ace has done a good job of making sure we have the right pieces to get the customers taken care of and the trick to knowing um how to how to use it well is just knowing everything that's here so we're going to get started the very first thing that i want you to know is that we have a bunch of different threads here so we're going to start off with pipe thread uh international pipe thread and then we're going to go into compression and then we're gonna get into flare thread, and then we've got some hose barb fittings, and then some garden hose fittings. And I'll go over each one in depth. But the reason I like to bring that up is because we have, between galvanized fittings, and our PEX fittings, and our plastic fittings, and our brass fittings, um, it comes in handy to know how everything goes together. And so, international pipe, doesn't matter the material is going to screw on to international pipe compression is going to screw on to compression and, and so on but generally 90 percent of the fittings are going to be international pipe so that's where we're going to get started so the international pipe down here is purple um and that's good to know because um right here for instance we have the green labels on this and the green is compression but we're starting with the purple so Right here on the front of this rack, we start with uh, the purple compression fittings. And um, I'm gonna pull each one out um, so that you can see it and know exactly what we're talking about. So this first one is a brass elbow. And elbows are always female to female. Um, and they are, um, this one is a 45 degree elbow. So sometimes you need a particular bend. Um, when we go down to the next one, we go to a uh, 90 degree elbow. And some of these have tags on them, so it might be difficult to kind of see, but the elbow is going to be 90 degrees on a standard elbow. And again, this is one of the things that's kind of neat that can help customers is um, these elbows right here actually um, some of them are, let's say, a quarter to a quarter. They might be the same size. Others might be a quarter to three-eighths. So you can actually reduce, and that would be called a reducing elbow, um, to get a customer uh, a fitting taken care of with less parts for them. So um, they kind of go in order by size, so you can see everything here. Um, the next one that we're going to come across is a quarter inch. So we've got a T. And a T is going to be female on all three sides. And again, there's some different size reductions and stuff that could be here. So just keep that in mind when we're looking for fittings to uh, get the customer taken care of. Um, when we go on, um, we do have, uh, we go to a cross too. So elbow's going to have two sides. T is going to have three. A cross is going to have four uh, sides. So just just so you know. Then we get into couplers. Couplers are the most popular um, fitting that we're going to sell. Um, you always need to couple. And when you're... So a standard coupler is going to be female to female. And um, there's... There's... Uh, similar uh, to the elbow where you can have let's say a half inch uh, by half inch so half inch female the half inch female and then there's what's called either a reducer or a reducer coupling um, there's a little bit of different terminology out there but that means that one size might be half inch and the other size might be three eighths um, just again another tool to help get the customer taken care of so um, those go to very big sizes, uh, up to one inch. Um, but that's all we've got right there for the purple section. And then the rest is behind it up here. So, um, when we stand on top, um, we start off with, uh, what might be called a riser. 
and it can adapt to different sizes. So, um, for instance, uh, this is a quarter inch connector and it is female to male and each of them are quarter inch and it doesn't make a, a ton of sense necessarily to have that but sometimes someone needs a fitting just a little bit taller or they're trying to space it away um, let's say they're trying to give a little bit of a rise to like a, uh, uh, a pressure monitor or something and that'll have it stick up a little bit and uh, get their pressure gauge out of the way so that's one instance that they could use that but one thing that really comes in handy with these is if you need a female fitting to be bigger than a male fitting, then this is a good place to look to. Um, so these connectors on top are just female to male. Um, could be the same size, but the male could be a little bit smaller. Um, on the very, very top, we've got close nipples, but we'll come back to those. Um, all a close nipple means is it is the shortest nipple when you have a chunk of pipe that just has threads on it it is the shortest uh, nipple that they make to attach two fem female pieces together and um, there's nothing but threads on this that's the shortest that it comes in but we'll come back to those um, let's see the next one is a bushing and a bushing um, all this terminology is the same in plastic, galvanized, and brass. A bushing is uh, one side is male, one side is female, but the male side is always bigger than the female side. So um, there's always going to be two different sizes in a bushing. Um, if they were the same size, one side was male, one side was female, you'd be looking at the connector that we just went over before. But when the bigger side's male and the smaller side's female, that would be a bushing. And again, international pipe. So we go through the bushings right here and real fast, uh, the next one, so this is still a bushing. This would be a hex bushing. And I just wanna compare this to what's called a face bushing. Um, a face bushing is the same thing as a bushing, it just doesn't have the hex piece that the hex bushing has. It still reduces from the male side being bigger and the female side being smaller, but the it, it just doesn't have that hex portion of it. So, um, the next one, I'm gonna try to get it back in the package. It's good to have everything in the right package. And when we are helping customers, don't be afraid to leave bins open so that it's easier to get the right part back in the right bin. Um, the next uh, little part we have is a cap. So a cap always has, um, it always goes over a male. So a cap is going to have female threads and it caps off the line. It's, it's always going to be female and it's going to screw onto a male. Um, the next little portion here is a plug and plugs do the opposite plugs um, if you have a female uh, plugs will thread in too so plugs have male threads caps have female threads and uh, the plugs will go into the female end so let's see so i'll do this so we do have two different types of plugs we have what are called a square head plug and then we have what would be a countersunk plug uh, or a hex, uh, hex fitting plug. And so plugs, again, they both have male threads on them, but one of them has something uh, protruding out and the other has a, has a female end for a hex wrench to go in there, an Allen wrench. Um, and a customer might not need one or the other, but, um, and sometimes they might, but if they don't, um, we could be out of one and have the other. So it's just nice to know the options just in case there's inventory issues. Um, it could, uh, could mean that a customer doesn't leave empty handed and we got them taken care of, um, without them having to, having to go somewhere else, even if we're out of one of them. 
So, just another tool there. Um, let's see. Uh, besides the hex and the countersunk, um, let's see. That's the hex. Oh. And then we do have a square headed plug, too. And this helps get a wrench on there. Again, the plug's male, but this is hex. Whereas the square head is going to have four sides, the countersunk is a hex and it has six. This is a hex, but you can still get a wrench on it. The next one down here is uh, going to be our, our nipples. So we've got additional nipples. Again, we've got the close nipples on top. And then down here, we have um, hex nipples. What's different about these um, is I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to find one that's already open or has a sticker in the right spot. The hex nipples are still a close nipple. They're fairly compact, but they have a hex going around the center of them so that you can get a wrench on there. And that's really convenient and really important because um, sometimes if you're wrenching on something, you have to be able to get it off. And unfortunately, more often than not, it leads to messing up the threads. So there's things you can do to prevent that, but having that hex on there um, does a couple of things for us. One, the customer can get a wrench on there. And two, if we're, we happen to be out of the close nipples, there's still another uh, box that we can get the customer taken care of. Uh, these ones um, are also adapter nipples, so they can be the same size, but one side can also be bigger and the other side can also be smaller too. So just uh, one more thing to keep in mind there. Um, the next thing, we've got some more elbows to go over. You might go, well, we just went over elbows on the, on the first little section here. And we did, but those are regular elbows. These elbows are street elbows. And every time you use the word street elbow, it means one side's female and the other side is male. So again, one side's female and the other side is male. And that can help save some fittings, make it a little cheaper for the customer, get us where we need to go uh, quicker. Generally, if you can use less fittings, um, there's less places to leak and that means your plumbing job is a little more quality. So this is a 45 degree street elbow. Right below it, we have a 90 degree street elbow. Again, female threads, male threads, that's what makes it street. Down here, we have hex nuts, and these hex nuts um, can kind of come in handy uh, if you're engineering, which uh, we do a lot of someone's uh, over by a brass rack, but these can help support a washer or assist in mounting a fitting and they work for pipe thread you might go whoa huh that looks kind of like a nut in the bolt rack and absolutely it does um it might be a little skinnier but uh these are for pipe thread um everything in the bolt area is going to be for bolt thread so they're just not going to cross so these are made for pipe the only other thing is there there are some uh some nuts and electrical fittings that do have pipe thread too, but uh, we'll cover those in the electrical video. The next thing I've got here, and I've got one out of the package here, is a union. And a union is basically a female coupling uh, that brings two pieces together, but this is when, so you use this, just wanna show you all the pieces here. So there's a, um, there's two, a left and a right side, and then a middle piece that keeps everything together. And when, basically when you use this is when you have two rigid pipes coming together, there are situations where um, if you unscrew one of the pipes to screw it in, it'll unscrew on the other end. And so you have to think about um, you have to think about how the pipes go together. So this lets you fashion the two rigid pipes on each side and then neither of them have to turn. Only the center has to turn on this fitting. It's hard to do it with, uh, with one hand here, but um, only one side has to turn. And so that's, that's what a union would be for. Hopefully that, uh, hopefully that makes sense. So, okay. 
now that we're done with that side um, we're almost done with the uh, with the regular uh, international pipe thread fittings um, I told you we'd come back to the nipples and that's what we're doing I'll show you these one more time these are the close nipples so that means the threads are all the way through um, to put the put the parts together and then when we go to the other side over here we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have the regular uh, nipples so what's special about the regular nipples is um, there's just different lengths so sometimes you need something that's four inches or six inches well that's all gonna be right here it is all sorted by size so uh, one eighth of an inch we've got you know inch and a half uh, we'll go two two and a half inches three inches all the way up to uh, let's see uh, five inches and that's the biggest I see for one eighth of an inch we've got some other ones that go up to six inches but these are all just different lengths of nipples so same part looks like we have a lot but uh, it's really uh, really not too bad so that's pretty much everything for the for the pipe fittings. Um, the next thing I want to move on to is compression fittings. So compression fittings are on the first two doors here, and compression fittings are are green in this rack, whereas the international pipe is purple. So there's a lot less that this adapts to, and I guess I should say that. Um, some of these fittings do have international pipe on them too so if you're um if you're attaching between two different types of fittings um this will be it but if it has compression on it it will be here so one side might be compression the other side might be pipe thread but it, as soon as you can get to pipe thread you can pretty much adapt to anything and that's that's really the main thing i want to make sure that you learn from this and helping customers that if we're trying to get anywhere if we can get to pipe thread we can we can go anywhere so every situation is just a little bit different but i'll get into some of the different parts and uh, pieces here so we're going to start with the back rack and we're going to show you some of the components on this so uh one of the things uh the very top we start off with compression rings and that's exactly what this is is just a it's just a compression ring i'll show you how that goes together um the next one let's see we do have compression rings in metal and then we have them in plastic that just comes down to the customer usually i default to the uh, brass if a customer doesn't have a preference uh, next thing we'll go to is the nut and so the nuts in here separate the nuts are similar to caps um, but they have a hole in them and again this comes down to this is a this is a compression thread um, the next thing we have are um, inserts and these are for when you're doing so the compression fittings go into copper and plastic for the most part and the inserts will go into the plastic so it doesn't collapse so it gives you a good seal but since plastic is so uh, malleable and not quite as strong as the copper um, it helps to have an insert ring to go in there so i'll uh, i'll show you that so um when we put all these together um i've thrown a lot at you i want to make sure that um that you kind of know it from the start here so i'm going to take a big one uh, bigger fitting so it's visible so you can see how everything goes together so what you do is every fitting comes with um, the fitting the ring and the compression nut on there and then what you do is put them all together um, and thread them together once you have once you have the copper or once you have the plastic in there. And again, um, I talked about the insert, so I better, uh, I better highlight that. And that's when you use the insert, it's the same thing. Um, you're gonna put it together the same way. Whoa, 
or using the other side now. So you're gonna put it together the same way with the nut and the ring on the fitting. Um, but this one doesn't have a hose, so it's not a, um, it's gonna be a little easier for me. But if I did have a hose, uh, this ring would be sitting there, um, sticking out just a little bit, and that would prevent the hose, uh, hose from collapsing. And it actually, actually would go, um, would go the other way um, in there um, like that. So you'd be able to see a little bit of it, but it just makes sure it stays on the hose so it doesn't collapse. All right. Um, so because you're going from, so with these fittings, um, if you're running a hose, you're going, so this is, this is a male thread right here and you have the nut going over top of it there's always this and then you're gonna go to another size or another side um, where it's gonna have this on the other side to meet it so because of that there's no female compression thread and that does throw a lot of customers off and it's just something I want you to be prepared for um, that there's not really any female compression threads now that being said we do have a few um, in our store and the main place we have those is the uh, sink lines and the toilet lines. There are female compression lines in there. So um, we'll, we will cover that in a separate video, but um, I just wanna make sure you know how the fittings work. And the hose is gonna go from here and then it's gonna go to another fitting and it's gonna have that exact same fitting on the other side. So there's just, there's just no female by the nature of the fittings. Um, kind of goofy, but that's just uh, how those fittings work. So, as we go down, we have compression by compression, which is the piece that I just had for you. And then we have a compression T. And this is a compression where you have three sides and they all have the compression nuts and the sleeves on there. Uh, so it's good to go. Um, there are some of these that do an adapter. So this one that I grabbed happened to be uh, half by half by half. Um, there's another one over here that's a three eighths by three eighths by a quarter. So if you are dealing with different sizes, that can that can help save some fittings. Uh, when we go down a little bit further, here we have a half inch compression elbow. So compression and compression on both of the sides here and um, they unscrew and have the nuts and the sleeves on them just like the other fittings that I've shown you um, it's just the compression size that I want to make sure to hit home that that everything's compatible on it so uh, again 90 degree elbow half inch compression and then um, we get into adapters so I told you earlier that we can adapt between compression thread and pipe thread, and this is where we do that. Um, before we do that, um, if you have copper and someone is soldering, we do have a, some sweat fittings too. And sweat just means that you'll solder um, the fitting on. So you'll have a torch and you'll have solder and that'll it'll melt around that to go on. Um, the next fitting we have on here, like I mentioned, is adapting between sizes. So, um, in this side that comes with the nut, it would be your right on this, is going to be compression. And then the other side is female pipe thread, female international pipe thread, so that you know what you're doing to cross between fittings. Um, when we go down a little bit further, we have the inverse of that fitting. I'll grab our bigger ones so it's so it's clear on the camera here but this is um, this is compression by male pipe thread instead of the female fitting so um, so that you can adapt uh, between those all right going to the next panel that's that's this whole front panel here going to the next panel um, those type of fittings uh, keep going on here and then the next fitting we come across, again, in order of size, is a, uh, an adapter elbow. So this adapter goes from compression thread 
and this has mill pipe thread. It's a 90 degree elbow, compression thread to mill pipe thread, mill international pipe thread on the other side. And then when we keep going a little bit more, we have the same fitting um, with compression on one side, but then female pipe thread on the other. And some of those have um, different sizes that they'll adapt to so that we can get to the right place with, uh, with fewer fittings for the customer. So again, compression to female pipe thread. Um, the next uh, place we go is called, uh, it, it would be a branch compression tee. And what that means is we've got compression on the left, uh, compression on the right, and then this is pipe thread on the center. So we've got two of them coming together and we're going to pipe. Uh, that, would be, that would be your ticket. So another T. And then we have kind of the standard fittings of a compression cap. So there's the compression nut that was right at the beginning of the compression section. But this one is just a cap. It's a standard cap for compression thread, so this will seal off a line if you need to cap it off for some reason or cap off a fitting. There's no hole in the, in the center. Um, notice there's no plugs in this section for compression, and that's because there's no, there's no female fittings for compression, so, um, so there's, no, there's no need for plugs either. Way. So uh, as we move on, there's this last just just kind of, I'm going to call it a weird section here that sometimes we can get lucky uh, when we're helping a customer. I told you at the beginning that generally there's, there's no female compression threads, and that is true for the most part, except for what we have for faucet hoses. Uh, sometimes we've got to make something work there for a customer. But right here, we do have some silver fittings that do adapt from a female compression thread to something else. Um, but it's very limited and uh, generally um, it, it's rare we're able to help a customer uh, out with this, with these fittings, but sometimes it does happen and it's good to know that, that they do exist. I'm going to let you look in each of these bins. There's only a few of them uh, just so you can kind of help get familiar when you're getting your hands on the fittings. So that's all for compression that we're going to go over. Next, we're gonna we're gonna be real easy here, um, and these are orange. Again, each section is a uh, denotes a style of fitting. So the orange fittings are pipe thread on one side, but then it's got hose barb on the other. And what I mean by hose barb is something that you want to stick a hose onto. So it's going to be a male hose barb, stick a hose onto, and every time someone's buying these, don't forget to uh, recommend hose clamps. 99% uh, of the time, they'll need them for this section. So uh, the hose will shove on here, and then um, they can get to pipe thread uh, to, to put it on their project, whatever they're working on. But hose clamps are a great recommendation for this section. So uh, starts off with, we've got hose barb to female pipe thread on the top here and then we go down to a uh, hose barb uh, elbow with pipe thread being male right here and then we've got hose barb to hose barb to put two hoses together maybe someone accidentally cut a hose and they've got to put it back together um, that's a great great piece for it um, let's see, this is a, a hose barb T, putting hose together. And then the rest of the hose barb fittings are down here where we have the hose barb with male pipe threads on there. Um, then we go down and then we go into the female. So it restarts. So that's all the hose barbs, not too bad at all. I'm going to stay down here because this next section really comes in handy for a few reasons. So these are yellow and they denote garden hose fittings. So garden hose fittings are different from international pipe fittings. They are a coarser thread. So anything to do with a garden hose 
is going to have a different thread and it's pretty common that folks have to adapt uh, to a pipe uh, thread. Um, some folks build their own sprinkler, sometimes they're ringing their sprinkler to a, to a or run of their garden hose to a uh, special watering system that they have. There's all sorts of reasons they might want that. But each one of these is also duplicated in our lawn and garden aisle with the rest of the lawn and garden items and the sprinkler stuff. So just keep that in mind. Um, if we're out here or if we're out in our lawn and garden aisle, um, we can pull the same fittings. They're not different fittings. There might be something else that, that might be here. So um, they can adapt to pipe thread too. So um, this one is a three quarter inch male garden hose thread to a half inch female pipe thread. Um, just to give you an idea here and actually show you, I don't know how well you can zoom in here, but this is three quarter inch male threads. On the right here, this is garden hose thread. It's a little bit more coarse, a little more aggressive. This is pipe thread, uh, male pipe thread. So just so you can see the difference and um, they just, they aren't compatible with each other, but we've got these fittings so we can get the customer taken care of. And sometimes when we're helping a customer with a project, it's nice to have the garden hose fittings uh, close so we can just grab these and not have to walk them all the way around the store to get the right parts that they need. Um, we do have like a little Y over here. Uh, we've got some others in the lawn and garden section with valves on them, but uh, we've got a Y here. Um, there's some swivel unions and other pipe thread adapters. Um, we do have uh, hose uh, couplers, so you can put two male ends of a garden hose together. Um, we do have some individual gaskets for the customer, but we've got 10 packs in the lawn and garden section too. But sometimes someone only wants uh, one or two, so that could help them out. Um, right here we've got garden hose caps. So sometimes uh, you might have a sprinkler that has been in the shop and you go to use it, you go, oh no, it can have a hose that attaches to the other side to add another sprinkler to it, but it might be missing the cap. Uh, here's a replacement cap for that. Let's see. And this is an awesome part for a, uh, for a swamp cooler. Uh, whenever, nope, I misspoke. This is a garden hose to a flare fitting. I'm thinking of the next one here. So this one's an awesome fit fitting. This comes around when, when folks are hooking up swamp coolers. Um, they generally have a line outside. So this will go from your garden hose from your hydrant outside and is already hooked up for compression thread. So garden hose to compression, and that's generally what is used for fridges, but uh, this fitting is mainly designed for hooking up swamp coolers outside. So that's, that's great. And then, um, let's see. That's pretty much, that's pretty much all the fittings for, um, for the garden hose. I'll let you kind of kind of look at the rest of this and uh, and kind of get used to it, but um, that's a good overview, okay? Um, the last group of fittings that I want to go over with you is flare fittings. So flare fittings are generally used for uh, gas. Um, they are, I guess a side note while I'm thinking about it, there's some customers that come in for hydraulic fittings and we don't have those, the, the flare fittings, the compression, they're all different. We don't have the hydraulic, but we do have the flare. And the flare is, is very common for gas. So if someone has a gas water heater, a gas stove, a gas dryer, um, that's what these fittings are for is, is the gas very generally. Uh, Sometimes there are situations to use them for water, but in our area, that's what's most popular. And 
you know a fittings flare when on one end it doesn't have threads all the way it has threads and then it's got this little taper on it and that taper is um, it actually forms a metal on metal seal it's soft enough to where it actually mushes the metal a little bit and uh, and seals it so um, you don't have to use thread seal tape on these um, like you do international pipe same thing with compression you don't use uh, thread tape on that but you would on pipe thread and you would on the flare thread um, there's flare to flare um, right here are the next fittings um, this is male flare to a female uh, pipe thread so you can adapt um, let's see we keep going down and these are very useful uh, flares a little bit like the compression where we do not have um, a female fitting except for this row right here there's female flare to female flare but that's about the only female fittings there are so if you do have a male fitting that you have to get to a pipe thread what you do is you have your male flare you go ahead and thread this on to uh, to make that a female and then you can do a male flare on the other side and then go to a pipe thread fit to get the customer taken care of um, that's that's really handy to have um, then we keep going down here uh, we have let's see here some inverted flare fittings um, jump on over here okay uh, the next fittings that we have are uh, we've got like an elbow like a, a flare fitting that's male to male pipe thread um, then the next fittings we've got flare to flare in an elbow 90 degree elbow and then we'll have flare to female pipe thread um, and then we'll have a flare uh, some flare nuts on here and that's when we're using uh, copper uh, with this so kind of looks like a similar deal to compression and it is but if a customer's looking for these generally they'll they'll know um, kind of how to use those and we can just help them get the right fittings but there's a flare nut um, then we've got another style of nut um, right below that and then we have a flare cap so uh, same thing with pipe thread same thing from, from compression sometimes you just want to cap off the line that's exactly what this is for just a flare cap Alrighty, um, the next fitting, um, we have a flare uh, plug, so same deal if you have a female flare you have to seal, maybe you took out a water heater and you're, you want to plug off that line, um, that, would, that would be a great way to do that, make sure uh, your family's safe. Um, then we get into uh, kind of some branch tees here. Um, so we've got flare tees where they're flare all the way around and then we have the branch tees again similar to compression where you have male flare, male flare, and then male pipe thread coming out the top. Um, down here we get into a flare thread to male pipe thread. And then that's that's pretty much all the flare fittings except um, there is a special size that's separated from the rest that's common with ovens and household water heaters and whatnot and there's a few more blue fittings right here and there's a um, there's a 15 16 size that comes in common that um, it might not fit the rest of these but um, 
they're they're back here so don't forget about these the rest of these they're similar to the fittings we went over just some additional sizes to help everyone get taken care of so uh the last portion of this uh these are all brass valves and they come they just they come in handy um getting everybody uh getting everybody taken care of so um the first thing is a needle valve so these are valves for everything not just flare thread they're also for compression thread they're also for pipe thread but they're also for flare thread so the first one i grabbed is a compression thread so it's got the two nuts on there and a needle valve um, is just a smaller it's just different from a ball valve but it's a smaller valve where you can turn and um, that's how that's how it's done but it can be a little bit more compact um, let's see besides needle valves I should highlight this one too this is so hard to see with the with the packaging on here um, this is a piercing valve so if you have a line whether it's uh, usually copper um, and you want to tie into it, maybe you're adding a fridge uh, line for your refrigerator for your ice maker, this can go on the line and it'll actually pierce it and then you have a valve without having to cut the line and do some extra work right there. Um, let's see, the rest of these are needle valves for the most part. And then we get into a ground plug valve and these are kind of like a ball valve um, when you look at them so there's flare and compression in these but um, they're not they can go all the way around like they don't they don't twist out or in they don't have one direction but basically if if this little flag is in line with it that means that the valve is open and if you turn it any other way that will mean that the valve is closed so uh, w something where direction doesn't matter um, very uh, very common to hash so uh, there's the ground plug valves there let's see and then we get into um, all right then we get into drain cogs which is the very last fitting on here so how drain cocks work is um, they're a valve and it's very compact, but um, it goes in and out rather than left or right. So this one is a 3 8 pipe thread uh, drain cock. And so what this sticker is hiding is, is 3 8 pipe thread. And when this fitting is turned, um, I'm gonna try to do this so that you can see it go up um the valve the valve opens on the top and it, it stays in the threads and then when you turn it the other way this top piece is going to start going down and then that's going that's going to seal it and make sure that it's um that it's tight has a watertight seal and the water is going to drain from the very center of this so uh, just something that's good to know. It's nice and compact. There's a few situations where where you might use this. Um, most recently, I helped someone uh, had a tight spot in an RV that they needed a drain line in, and anyway, this is what they settled on. So, um, I hope that was uh, beneficial. As always, uh, if you have any questions, there's there's a lot here, so look over it, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.